Facebook social groups are a common ground in cyberspace where like-minded individuals can interact, exchange views and share their knowledge of whatever broad subject or niche interest to which the group is dedicated. From Apple bobbing to Zydeco music, no matter how obscure or how small the circle of dedicated enthusiasts, every hobby, activity or creative endeavour imaginable has a Facebook group to represent it. These groups can be very active or stagnating in a black hole. Some are all hearts and rainbows, very, very few, whilst others can be a hotbed of arguments, bullying, name-calling and inflammatory discourse, a bit more common. This is often determined by the group's moderator's level of control, oversight and tolerance for bad behaviour. Most groups fall into a comfortable middle ground between the two extremes. If an interest is broad enough, there can be hundreds of Facebook groups in which to participate. Even if a subject appeals to only an infinitesimal sampling of internet surfers, it is bound to have a handful of representative groups, each with its own flavour, personality, perspective or approach to the given subject. Many times, connected or similar groups are splintered off from an original group due to a clash of egos, arguments or other derisive factors. Participants often join numerous groups involving the same subject, looking for varied input or searching for the virtual hangout which best suits their needs. The Men's Adventure Paperback series of the 70s and 80s, now known as the Men's Adventure Paperbacks of the 20th century, is a hangout for fans of old school action fiction series such as The Executioner, The Destroyer, The Death Merchant, The Penetrator and a horde of similar vigilante avengers, mercenaries, rogue cops, secret agents and others who always have time between murders, mayhem and gun porn to bed down a bevy of long-legged, buxom, often traitorous vixens and do it all in under 200 pages. This is an amazing feat when you consider it takes modern action heroes such as Jack Reacher or Mitch Rapp six to eight hundred pages to save the world. To the uninitiated, men's adventure paperbacks would appear to be a micro niche interest, even when compared to Apple Bobbin or Zydeco Music. In reality, however, the men's adventure paperback series group boasts close to 5,000 members. Around 100 members participate occasionally, while between 20 and 50 hardcore members participate weekly or daily. There are also a number of lurkers who sporadically pop up and voice an opinion, share photos of paperback finds, or ask a question. Created in 2009, it's an active group comprised almost exclusively of men of a certain age who read uncountable examples of men's trash fiction in their misspent youth. All are readers, many are writers, some even contributing to the series back in the day, and others who have become writers for whom these series were cherished inspirations. The members are incredibly knowledgeable about their collective interest. There is not a men's adventure paperback ever written, not read by at least one member in the group. In my eight years of participation, there has never been a question asked about men's adventure paperbacks that hasn't been answered with astonishing speed by another group member. Even the most obscure memory of a series. It had a blue cover and a guy with a big ass knife who worked for some kind of secret organization. It generates the name of the series, the mesmerizer, further detailed information, three books in the series written by Butch Randy, which was a pseudonym for current best-selling author XYZ, and very often a cover scam. On top of everything else, members of the Men's Adventure Paperback Series group are frankly the kindest, most polite and generous folks anywhere on social media. No drama. Ever. The few trolls who have popped up have been handled with the speed and efficiency of a champion whack-a-mole player. The group is a haven of sanity for many members who participate nowhere else on social media. Group activity is also not confined to Facebook and the internet. Many round-robin boxes have travelled around the country to land at the home of participating members. The member who starts the round-robin puts 20 men's adventure related paperbacks into a box and mails it to the next member on the sign-up list. When the next participating member receives the box, they take out the books they want and replace them with an equal number of books from their own collection and send it on to the next participant.
There are usually 10 to as many as 30 group members participating, so the box can take a while to make it back to the originating member. However, when it does, it is rare for there to be any of the original books inside. Summer usually involves a paperback swap. Participating members send a vintage men's adventure paperback to another participant, while another participant sends them a vintage men's adventure paperback. The swaps are shown on the group page with reviews of the received books. It's an activity that keeps the group's Facebook page alive with comments and interesting threads. Normally, during the winter holidays, members of the Men's Adventure Paperback Group are obviously too macho to participate in a secret Santa anonymous exchange of several vintage paperbacks. However, by switching the name to Vigilante Santa, an activity similar to Secret Santa, actually it's exactly the same, has proven to be a successful yearly event. About six or seven months ago, a woman named Alicia Rivers contacted another of our Men's Adventure Group moderators, Tom Simon, via the group's Facebook page. She wanted to know what to do with her late brother's executioner books, as she had a ton of them. If she couldn't find a home for them, she was going to either take them to Goodwill or toss them. She told Tom she had lived in Ventura, California. Tom immediately passed her info on to me, since he knew I lived about 15 minutes south of Ventura. I reached out to Alicia and offered to take a look at the collection and advise her. She said she'd contact me after she'd gone through the books and organised them. The odd comment, I say odd because why do you need to organise a couple of boxes of battered executioner paperbacks, ended our conversation and I thought no more about it. However, out of the blue, at the beginning of May 2019, I received a Facebook message from Alicia. She said she had finally organised her brother's books and asked if I would advise her about what to do with them. I had an appointment near her house the following day, so we arranged to meet. When I arrived, Alicia took me into her garage. I immediately became weak in the knees and almost began to hyperventilate. This collection was not a couple of boxes of battered paperbacks from the Executioner series as I expected. Instead, there were boxes and boxes and boxes filled with a wide array of men's adventure paperbacks in what appeared to be excellent condition. Digging randomly through the first few boxes, I ran my hands over full runs of some of the most highly sought after, hard to impossible to find, high value men's adventure series with brightly coloured pristine covers, many of which had never been opened. Black Samurai, Narc, The Liquidator, Riker, Striker, Dark Angel, four books worth upwards of a thousand dollars if they could ever be found, especially the elusive low print run fourth book and long runs of many other classic and iconic men's adventure series. I had walked into Aladdin's cave, a once-in-a-lifetime golden mother load. When I could breathe again, I tried to keep my voice from sounding shaky and responsibly explained that the books would bring in a sizable amount of cash via eBay if she could be patient until a hungry collector with a fat wallet came along. I was quite shocked when Alicia said that she wasn't concerned about the money, she simply wanted her brother's books to go to a good home. I told her I could share some with our men's adventure group, made up of readers who cherish these types of books. I could also send some via Operation Paperback to our military overseas, and take the rest to the VA hospital where men's adventure type books are craved by the patients there. Alicia was delighted with the plan, but she needed the books gone from her garage as quickly as possible as she was moving. She said if I took them right then, I could have them gratis. No money, zip, nada, zero down, zero at signing and zero payments. I started loading up the boxes and they just kept coming. A full run of the Executioner and the Stony Man series up to 2010 in VG condition, a full run of the Destroyer series in unopened mint condition, near full runs of the Penetrator, Richard Blade, the Butcher and the Death Merchant, boxes with the Dark Angel, Crown, Honey West, the Drake series by Stephen Marlowe, a ton of Shell Scott books by Richard Prather and partial odds and ends from a bunch of other series. She then asked me if I wanted the three boxes of westerns, with nearly full runs of Long Arm, Lone Star and other western series. I damn near wept. But she wasn't done. 
Once I loaded the westerns, she told me her sister and mother had collected vintage sci-fi paperbacks, about double the number of her brother's men's adventure collection. She wondered if, after she had gone through them all, would I come back and take them, again for free. This would involve another trip and double the amount of boxes involved in the first pickup. By now, I was beside myself with shock over the treasure trove. I asked Alicia about her brother and how he came to collect the books. She told me his name was Mike Carter. He lived in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where he and Alicia grew up. He was a big supporter of the military, having been in both the Army and the Air Force for different periods of time. Mike made a living driving a yellow cab taxi in Cheyenne and loved to read whenever he had a spare moment. His taxi always had a selection of men's adventure books scattered across the front passenger seat. Inside the front covers of his books, Mike would use his taxi stamp as an identifying book plate. Mike had a collector's personality, buying books in the different men's adventure series he was passionate about, even if he didn't have time to read them. They filled the shelves in his apartment. He never married and was happiest when surrounded by books. Unfortunately, Mike suffered from numerous health issues and passed away at the age of 58. Finding Mike's books was the kind of time capsule every bookhound dreams of stumbling into. It was the perfect storm of hard-to-find series in fantastic condition overall and at the perfect price, free. Like Mike, I am passionate about the genre of books and was thrilled to simply hold in my hands the many amazing gems in his collection. In reality, the monetary value of the collection in the grand scheme was relatively innocuous, but the intrinsic value to collectors was over the moon. The whole experience was a freakish windfall, which I felt the need to pay forward. I felt a responsibility to do for Mike's collection what I would like done with mine someday, having the books passed on to somebody who will understand the joy reading them brought me. There were books in the collection I hadn't seen in the wild in 30 or more years, paperbacks so scarce, especially in full runs in amazing condition, as to be virtually impossible to find on the collector's market. While it is true the collection would turn a decent profit in eBay auctions, I'm strictly a reader and a collector, not a dealer. I also felt the same way as Alicia. Dispensing of the collection was not about profit, nor was it about hoarding the books for myself. It was about honouring Mike Carter and his collection by giving access to the books to other like-minded enthusiasts. I felt this strange kinship to Mike Carter, and I was determined to find homes for the books with collectors who would appreciate and value them for what they are, as opposed to their market value. In the weeks after taking possession of Mike's collection, I dug through the books trying to determine how best to disperse them. There were books from both ends of the collecting spectrum. Many were not collectibles, but were still in great condition and still worth being read. Those books were donated through various charitable venues. Some were boxed and sending to our military overseas through Operation Paperback. Others were taken to the local VA hospital. Two boxes of fantasy novels went to a woman's shelter who were delighted to take them. A judicious selection was taken to the new understocked high school library at a local juvenile detention centre. The great majority of the books, however, were photographed and posted to the Men's Adventure Paperback Group on Facebook. The deal was first come, first serve, with resellers being blocked out. Whoever claimed the books first, in the beginning no more than 10 per person, could have them for the cost of postage. No matter what the intrinsic value was of a book, it was not sold, it was given. A gift from Mike Carter to another fan of the genre. Dispersing the books in this manner took almost three months and involved a lot of shipping and handling. It also involved many trips to the post office, where the desk clerks would shake their heads when they saw me come in with another tower of packages. In all, over 3,000 books were sent to collectors and readers in 38 different states and three different countries. Despite the time involved, I had a blast doing this. It's much more fun playing a men's adventure version of Santa Claus than trying to scrooge a few books from eBay that are going to make no difference to me in the long run. Trying to handle the opportunity in an altruistic way has provided me with good feelings and memories for a long time. I hope Mike Carter was looking down the entire time this went on and was smiling, knowing how much pleasure his books were bringing to so many others, especially me. Thanks, Mike.